Over the last 10 years of shooting 3-Gun, my rifle setup has changed many times. Recently, I've been shooting a 16-inch carbine that I built off of an ADM UIC receiver set with a Vortex 1-6 razor on top, and I really like the way it, that it handled. It was a good rifle, but it wasn't quite perfect. So today, I'm going to disassemble it, make some upgrades, and make it the best possible rifle that it can be. I'll save you the time on disassembly and get right to the good stuff, but I wanted to point out that I did bed the original barrel in Loctite 620 as I show later in the video. I've done this on several barrels and I've always been concerned about removing them. So I grabbed a one inch wooden dowel to press up against the barrel extension and a five pound persuader, and then I gave it a few love taps. So I like to build my rifles based on five principles, and that's one, a high quality barrel, which we have this criterion here, two, a free float handguard, three, a great trigger for the application, four, proper assembly. Um, I've already taken the liberty of facing the receiver set here, and we're um, going to, to assemble these and torque it uh, to the proper specifications. And then last is gonna be proper fitment. And what I mean by that is fitting me, fitting the shooter. So that's the reason I use this high mount and it's the reason I use this adjustable stock. Now on a normal mount, I still need a little bit of rise in the comb to be able to uh, um, look through the scope properly. And then this allows me to uh, fit the length of pull to fit me as well. So the, the uh, distance stock is definitely something that I like and I recommend. And then of course the 193, uh, high 1.93 inches from uh, barrel to uh, center line of the scope. This is an important part of working with a new combination of parts, and a lot of people miss this one the test fit. I'm not above this either, though. One of the main reasons that I'm rebuilding this rifle is the previous gas block I used was a JP clamp style, and while it worked just fine, it did not fit at all. So much so that even with all the Dremel work that I did, I still ended up with a bit of, of gas block to hand guard contact, and I'd frequently burn my hand on the gas block. Now I'm using a Superlative Arms adjustable gas block here, and I really like the positive detents, and it's a little bit more profile than the JP. And again, it is a clamp style, so that's a, that's a positive as well. So what do you think, does it look good? You seen any contact there? No, no, that looks great. There's plenty of room on the bottom, there's plenty of room on the top, there's plenty of room on the sides. So that is gonna work perfectly, which I'm really excited about because I did want to use this clampy one rather than the, the dimple one. So this is cool, there's the adjustment right there yeah thumbs up and look at that sticks just past here all right i'm excited okay so we're still in the uh, mock-up phase here but before we get too far i want to do one little check this is what i call the rod of truth rod of truth and basically what it is is uh just a wooden dowel that I've marked the line at 16 inches. One side I marked jail. We're going to federal pound me in the ass prison. And one side I marked free. So if we stick it down the barrel and this side shows, we need to do something with the muzzle device. If we stick it down the barrel and this side shows, we're good to go. So let's test this bad boy out. There you go. We are free, no jail today. So now we're gonna go ahead and disassemble it and then do final assembly with some little twists here. Now, before we start final assembly here, I wanna let you know how YouTube works. Because I'm showing you how I build this gun, YouTube will not let me monetize this video and that's okay. What I've done instead is I've created a build sheet 
of this rifle that's available in the 3-Gun Show Pro Shop. I'll put a link in the description down below and in the comments. If you like this rifle and you want to support this type of content, go ahead and make a purchase. It's only $9.99. I don't care if you share it with your friends, that's totally fine. Your support will help me continue to make videos like this. I want to prove that we can independently monetize this and make a sustainable thing. So if you do like this video and you do make that purchase, thank you for your support. So as a reminder, I like to do I like to build a rifle based on five principles. One is a high quality barrel. This is a great barrel. I'm really excited to to uh, shoot this Criterion and to give it the best possible chance we're going to assemble it properly and part of that assembly is going to be bedding this barrel now this is a pretty tight fit on this adm receiver and this may not be necessary but i'm just going to go ahead and give it that extra little bit of insurance so what i've got is loctite 620 it's the green loctite and i'm just goobering it around the edge here and we're gonna put it in the receiver. And cinch it down. And there is a little bit of goober overlap here, so I'm gonna get those off. What that does is it works like a liquid shim. And when it sets up in there, it makes that barrel nice and tight and won't move. Next up, I'm gonna add a little bit of grease to the threads on the receiver. And that means when we torque the barrel that we won't have any friction that'll mess with our torque readings. And I try to go sparse on this just because I hate the smell of grease. Your mileage may vary. Blech. Okay, so barrel nut. ADM makes an aluminum barrel nut, which is pretty cool. Super lightweight. And then expands at the same rate as the receiver, which is nice. All right, so that's hand tight. The other cool thing about the ADM barrel nut is that it uses the same wrench as the castle nut. So I use my Magpul wrench here. Get that on there. Okay, so that's nice and tight. And so now we're gonna torque it. ADM recommends 50 to 65 foot pounds, which is what we'll be doing here. So we're gonna go 55, just to be sure. And you want your torque wrench at 90 degrees to the wrench. So like this, that's how you torque stuff. All right, so that's one round. ADM recommends loosening it again, tightening it, loosening it, and then tightening it, and then we'll be done. So we're gonna do that now. As you can see that I've already made a mark right there for the center line of the gas hole. <laughs> gas hole. And so what we'll do is we'll do the same thing on the barrel here and then just line them up. So torque on this is 30 inch pounds. And I got my, hey, got my Vortex torque wrench already at 30. I'm happy with where that is. Install the bolt carrier group real quick. And we'll check the gas tube alignment. 
Perfect. Hell yeah. Okay. So now 30 inch pounds on this bad boy. All right, sweet. Gas block installed. Gas tube is running free, even when the beast cheese in there, good to go. Now the ADM receiver has this little locator hole up here, and the old handguard had this locator pin. The new handguard does not because it, was, it didn't come with a receiver. So I think I'm gonna pull that bad boy out and put that bad boy in there, or at least I'm gonna try. One thing to pay attention to is this dust cover pin. On some handguards, the dust cover pin can contact the handguard. And what that does is it pushes undue stress on the, the handguard and thus on the barrel nut, which is not something you want. So what I'll do is I'll end up trimming that, that pin down, but obviously I have enough clearance on this one. I don't need to do it. So we got a little bit of thread locker on there. And ADM just says to make these hand tight. So we're going to tighten them until they strip. And then last we put in this jack screw. And a little bit of thread locky lock on that. Boop, just a little bit. Turn this one again. Good to go. So now we're gonna install the muzzle device. Ordinarily, when you're installing one of these, you generally put on a crush washer on the threads and then push this and then it just kind of springs back and you tighten it into place. But it's a very imprecise method and I've always had this hunch that it really stretches those threads right there and stretching that thread can constrict the bore. So I'm gonna not do that. And we're gonna use these Surefire shims and it's a little bit of a process to do this but I think we're gonna be happy with the results. Holy shit. Well, that's really close. I think I just need one of these little guys. Woo, that really changed it. That was way too much. So these are all different thicknesses. I'm guessing like all the red ones are the same. This bad boy is huge, but it's red and those are red and they're thin. I don't, I don't know the hell that's pretty darn close oh yeah that's that's gonna be good with a little juice and then the tightening of the wrench on there actually that might not be enough could go get my micrometers but that would be too easy and I did drop one which is like losing 13 bucks <laughs> too much Awesome. So we're gonna try two of these paper ones now. Where did that other one go? Oh yeah, okay. Cool, this'll work. So what we're gonna do is back her off and then put on some special Surefire goo. Except for a knife when you need one. There we go, she's coming now. Got my universal wrench. <laughs> Found the one I dropped. We'll use that next time. There we go. So now, charging handle. 
A little loop for good luck. Lube the BCG. And there. Okay, so upper's done. That looks pretty damn cool. All right. On to the lower. So you can see here that there's two different color springs for the, uh, the hyperfire trigger. There's the red toggle springs for medium, uh, medium light trigger pull and then green toggle springs for light trigger pull. So we're gonna take the red springs and just toss them. There we go. That's a little loose, but once we get some spring tension on there, she should be okay. Now remember, spring goes this way. Spring legs go this way on the outside of the trigger part we just install, and then the hammer goes back. So, it's like this. There we go. Almost. There we go. This is kind of cool. So this now, this now is a one piece thing instead of a two piece thing. Kind of interesting. See how, whew, see how it works. Oh, the whole trigger's redesigned. Yeah. So here's the the third piece. That's now. Oh, interesting. Wow, that's cool. So it has this whole notch in there instead of this barrel. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm sure that's to make it easier to install. So that goes like that and turns, and then it's captured in there. Ha! That's that's awesome. And then these two things go on. And then this bad boy goes on. There we go. And push it back. Woo! Oh. oh. Okay, so lower's done. Upper's done. Put these bad boys together. Safe on. There it is. What do you think? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. We gotta check trigger out. Fun fact, I bought this trigger gauge from Jesse Tischhauser. <laughs> and apparently that's the last time it worked. pounds, eight ounces. Two pounds, six ounces. It's hard to explain and it's completely subjective, but the, uh, I really do like the way the, the nickel coated trigger feels. That's really cool. I like that a lot. And so, you know, they have that little shoe on there on the hyper fires. I don't ever put that on my trigger. I like just the straight old trigger like this. I like it. Now I've been rocking this one to six for four years. I think, I think I've been rocking this for four years. I tried this 193 taller mount and I really like it, especially with the dissident stock because you do get that extra height on there. So I like that a lot. Um, but got this guy, Gen 3 Razor. <laughs> My fancy knife. Whoa. Whoa. Oh man, look at that. Look at that big boy. 
New Gen 3 Razor 1 to 10. This is my very first MOA scope. All my other scopes, all of my other scopes are MRAD. This one is MOA. And the reason I did that is uh, the reticle is something interesting that I wanted to try out. And it, it uh, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to see how it works. And then uh, if, it, if I don't like it, I'll go back to MRAD. But this is my first year with an MOA scope. So wish me luck. Big chonky boy. That is awesome. Woo! I'm freaking pumped. This has really turned into a really cool build. I can't wait to shoot it. I'm so excited. So obviously the, uh, the scope here is just mocked up. It's not even... I got it okay straight, but not quite straight. I am waiting on just one last part here, <clears throat> which will affect where I put the scope. So maybe I'll show you how I set up my scope and the uh, stock in the next one. I wanna say thanks again to the folks that made this happen. Uh, you'll see them at the end of this video. And again, if you're looking for a build of your own and you like this one here and you want a build sheet, check out the link down below. You can go ahead and get a build sheet. Uh, based on this rifle here. And if this looks like it seems out of reach, it's important to remember that I've been doing this for 10 years and this is the rifle that I started shooting three gun with. So it doesn't have to be all at once. Start somewhere, just get out there and shoot. Thanks for watching and check out this other video right here. It's a good one.